I wanted to do something with my life that people thought was impossible before. In the heart of Silicon Valley, there emerged a story that captivated the world. Theranos. 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 I'm talking about Theranos. You founded this company 12 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Tell them how old you were. I was 19. A story of a historical rise of ambition that ultimately was found to be deceitful and unethical, culminating in the most historic downfall in recent history. Theranos is being sued for alleged fraud. And basically accusing Theranos of deceptive practices. Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes has now officially been indicted on federal wire fraud charges. Hi, I'm Pokey J and this is Behind the Crime. Today, we're looking at the rise and fall of Theranos and its founder, Elizabeth Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes was once a name synonymous with brilliance, ambition, and revolutionary technology. Born on the 3rd of February, 1984, Holmes showed ambition from an early age. She attended Stanford University studying chemical engineering. So Elizabeth dropped out of Stanford after, not, after one year at 19 to start this company. And it was here that an idea began to brew. At the age of 19, Elizabeth dropped out to pursue a vision, a revolutionary device that could run hundreds of medical tests on just a few drops of blood instead of the standard vials. Thus begins the founding of Theranos. Theranos means detecting the onset of disease in time for therapy to be effective. So being able to see the onset of disease in time to be able to do something about it. After the formation of Theranos, Elizabeth began to shift herself personally. Modeling herself on Steve Jobs, Holmes wore black turtlenecks and dropped her voice down to a bizarre baritone register. People who knew her uh, before she became the Elizabeth Holmes with that baritone voice, many of them do point to the fact that her voice definitely sounded different beforehand. A professor who taught Holmes at Stanford remembers Holmes' voice as sort of high-pitched when she was an undergraduate student. Then came the big switch. She says with this low voice, and I'm like, oh my god. However, odd personal choices aside, Silicon Valley actually embraced Theranos with open arms. Holmes and the team managed to find a mass amount of funding from investors who saw the value in the company. Investors such as Rupert Murdoch and Larry Elliston invested hundreds of millions into Theranos and the vision laid out by Elizabeth Holmes. At the peak of the company, Theranos was valued at over $9 billion, making Elizabeth Holmes the world's youngest self-made female billionaire. However, cracks were starting to form. Holmes claimed that Theranos's revolutionary device named the Edison could perform a full range of blood tests cheaply and efficiently. The first big red flag was the first time I saw the Theranos device, and you could quickly see that it was not what it had been claimed to be. Um, like everything inside the device was something that I had already seen before in almost any other laboratory that I hadn't been in up to that time. Um, and you could quickly tell that it couldn't run, you know, hundreds of tests, it couldn't even run two tests at the same time. And um, while I was there, we only got up to running seven tests total. And if you wanted to run all of those seven tests at the same time, those would have had to be, been on seven different devices. So her claims of running, you know, 300 or whatever tests from a single drop of blood seemed grossly exaggerated. However, behind closed doors, the technology was incredibly flawed. And I would see that the variations of the results that it produces was very high. And then in our daily lab meetings, we would kind of go over the experiments that we had done in the previous 24 hours and kind of pick and choose about what experiments needed to be repeated. So we would essentially just delete sections of an experiment and repeat it and replace it with new data. Theranos whistleblowers Tyler Schultz and Erica Chung revealed from their own experiences working at Theranos and with internal documents to back them up that the Edison device were producing inaccurate results and putting patients' health at risk. 
So being concerned, while I worked for the company, I had approached the CEO of the company, Sunny Balwani, and I said, look, we're seeing tons of issues with the patient results, with the medical devices, and our processes. I, th I think we need to pay attention to this and stop processing patient samples. And his response to me was, what makes you think you're qualified to say that? You need to do the job I'm paying you to do and process patient samples. So after this conversation, I quit. Due to the whistleblowers coming forward in 2015, journalist John Carreroo of the Wall Street Journal published a series of articles exposing Theranos and Elizabeth Holmes's lies. It was discovered Theranos was using commercially available machines to run their tests and mislead investors, doctors and patients into thinking their quote unquote revolutionary machines were producing accurate results. With Theranos' claims now under the microscope. Did it concern you that a number of tests weren't working on Theranos' devices? Her carefully crafted narrative began to unravel. The revelations from the article sparked a federal investigation, and in 2018, the Securities and Exchange Commission charged Elizabeth Holmes and the former Theranos president, Ramesh Sunny Balwani, with fraud. In 2016, federal regulators got involved, saying the Theranos lab did not comply with federal standards and shut it down. That same year, Balwani stepped down. Holmes' net worth is reevaluated to zero. Then in 2018, Holmes and Balwani are indicted on criminal fraud charges. Accusing them of a multi-year scheme that exaggerated the company's technology, business and financial performance to fool investors and the wider community alike. Now under a harsh spotlight, Elizabeth Holmes' usually sharp and calm demeanor shifted and was now unable to answer simple questions about the company and its operations during her deposition. Suddenly, the woman who always seemed to have all the answers. We are the only lab company that is actually really focused on leading with transparency. Now had none. I, I don't know specifically. I, I'm not sure. Um, I, I don't know exactly. I just don't know. In 2021, Holmes went on trial for wire fraud and conspiracy to commit wire fraud. The trial was a massive media spectacle which further highlighted the extent of the deceptional practices that Theranos employed. On January 3rd, 2022, Elizabeth Holmes was found guilty of four counts of fraud. Late Monday, a jury found her guilty of four fraud-related counts for conning some of her investors into believing her blood testing startup Theranos could perform hundreds of diagnostic tests for everything from cancer to HIV to pregnancy with just the prick of a finger. And on November 18th that same year, Holmes was sentenced to 11 years in prison and ordered to pay back $452 million to the victims of her fraud. Disgraced Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes was sentenced to 135 months in prison for defrauding investors in her blood testing company. On May 30th, 2023, Holmes began her sentence and is expected to serve a minimum of seven years. The rise and fall of Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos serve as a cautionary tale about the dangers of ambition and the hustle that comes with trying to cement yourself into Silicon Valley. While other companies such as Vital One are trying to pick up where Theranos left off and attempting to ethically bring this vision to life. The one company that's on my mind that is probably on the minds of a lot of folks in here when we're talking about rapid blood tests, <laughs> rhymes with Theranos. There will now be a stigma against any innovation in the health sector. So I guess we'll see if the revolutionary technology will ever come to be realized, or if history is doomed to repeat itself. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Behind the Crime. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.